Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. The title of our video today is Jesus Ministry, Part 10. The text we're going to be looking at is from the second chapter of Mark, verses 13 through 17, and this text is about the calling of Matthew, who became Matthew the Apostle. And there's, there's just lots of really good things for us to think about in this text. And so we're going to read it and jump right in. As always, we'll be reading from the Simplified New Testament, which is my translation of the New Testament. So let's see what Mark has to say here. Chapter 2, verse 13. Jesus was by the Sea of Galilee again, teaching a large crowd of people as he walked along. Matthew was sitting in his tax collector's booth. Come and be my follower, Jesus said to him. Leaving his booth right then, Matthew became a follower of Jesus. That evening, Jesus ate dinner at Matthew's house. In addition to Jesus' followers, Matthew had invited other tax collectors and people the religious leaders considered sinful. When the Pharisees saw that Jesus ate with sinful people, they went to Jesus' followers and demanded, Why does he associate with those kinds of people? They are tax collectors and sinners. Jesus heard them and said, Healthy people do not need to see a doctor, do they? I did not come here to bring righteous people to God, but sinful people. So there's a lot for us to think about in this text, a lot of really interesting things for us to talk about. Uh, and so let's start with the idea of, of Matthew as Jesus calling him to be one of his followers and then appointing him to be one of his apostles. Matthew was a very unlikely candidate for uh, becoming an apostle, even for being one of the full-time followers of Jesus, because nobody liked him. Why not? Well, because he was a tax collector. You see, the, the Jews considered tax collectors basically to be traitors because it meant one of their own was working with the Romans against them to collect taxes from them to pay to the Romans. And the way the system worked okay, uh, was that if you were set up with the Romans to be a tax collector, if the Romans said, and I'm just going to use a number for an example, okay, if the Romans said, okay, the tax is $5, then the tax collector needed to collect at least five because that's what he had to pay the Romans. But of course, then he needs to pay himself too, so he might collect eight or nine or even ten dollars and then turn around and pay the Romans the five dollars that they want and keep the difference himself as his pay for being a tax collector. And so the other Jews uh, thought this was terrible because number one, he was working with the Romans and number two, he was collecting more from his people then he needed to pay the Romans. And uh, most collector, tax collectors tended to collect a lot more <laughs> than they needed. Uh, for instance, if they needed to pay the Romans five, they might collect 10. And so they became pretty wealthy. Tax collectors lived quite well. They were wealthy people. And the, the rest of the Jews uh, didn't like them at all for what they did. And so why would Jesus choose somebody like that to be one of his followers and then appoint him to be one of his apostles. You see, he, he's, he's, not, he's not a popular guy. People didn't like him. So you'd, you'd sort of think, you know, that Jesus would select people that were popular, that people would like and that people would want to listen to. But, <coughs> excuse me, as is often the case, Jesus didn't do what most other people would have done or what people expected him to do. I think he saw something in Matthew. I think he saw something in all of the people that he selected uh, as apostles, even Judas initially, who 
gave in to Satan and, and turned on Jesus and betrayed him, I, I, I think there was something in Judas that could have been good and could have been used for good, but he fell prey to Satan's temptations and he turned against Jesus. But in Matthew's case, he, he didn't do anything like that. He was just a guy doing his job, making a, a, a living, taking care of his family, and uh, people didn't like him because of the job he chose to do. But Jesus saw something in him, I think, and he asked him to be his follower, invited him to be his follower. Now, the way the text reads, you know, Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee. There's a bunch of people there, and he's teaching them. And Matthew has his tax collector's booth set up there. And, and it sounds kind of like Jesus and Matthew have never met before. And Jesus just says, hey, Matthew, come on, be my follower. And Matthew says, okay, you know, and walks away from a successful uh, business enterprise to be a follower of Jesus. And that's probably not what happened. When, when we read the Gospel of John, we learn that Jesus had encounters with other of, of, of his disciples before he specifically called them to be his disciples. And I suspect that since Jesus' ministry in Galilee had been an ongoing thing, and by the Sea of Galilee is where he spent a bunch of time, uh, that he and Matthew had probably met. Matthew had listened to what he said. They probably had had conversations. And it was on this particular occasion that Jesus decided to invite Matthew to be one of his followers. And uh, Matthew must have been thinking about it because he just got up and said, okay, I think I'm going to do that. That sounds like a good idea. And he walked away from his tax collector's business. Now, if, if I'm right, and he was making a pretty good chunk of change, making a lot of money, right, then just leaving that to be a, a follower of Jesus was a huge sacrifice. And that was probably one of the things that Jesus was uh, looking for. Is, is Matthew the kind of person who will give up his earthly wealth in order to gain the spiritual wealth that Jesus could give him? And it turned out that Matthew was willing to do that. And so uh, later that evening, Matthew says, hey, you know, bring everybody over. We'll go to my house. We'll have dinner. It'll be a nice time. And, you know, so they go over to Matthew's house to eat. And it's not just Jesus uh, followers at that point, Matthew sends out messages to all his friends and other tax collectors, and they show up for this huge dinner party, and Jesus is there, and he's teaching uh, all of these people. And some of the religious leaders, who always seem to be following Jesus around, listening very closely to what he was saying, trying to catch him, you know, in saying something that, that they didn't agree with, they were there, and when they saw Jesus interacting and, and, you know, having fellowship and eating and, and everything with these tax collectors. Oh, tax collectors and sinners. Jesus is supposed to be a respectable young rabbi. Well, respectable young rabbis did not spend time with sinful people and especially with tax collectors. No, no, that's no way for him to be behaving. Well, they went to Jesus' disciples and said, hey, what's wrong with this guy? What is he doing? Look at this. Look at the people he's hanging around with. Why are you people even here? Right? They, did, they didn't like this. But Jesus heard them and, and basically said, okay, hold on, guys. Listen, people who are healthy don't need to go see a doctor, do they? People who need to go see a doctor are sick people, right? See, the implication was the religious leaders thought they were healthy. They thought they were righteous. They thought they were saved, right? And Jesus is saying, look, healthy people don't need to see a doctor. People who need to see a doctor are sick people. He said, I came to call sinners to repentance. You see, sinful people are the people I came to save, Jesus was saying. And so those are the people I need to spend time with. I don't need to spend time with you. You don't, you don't think you're sinful, do you? Now, he didn't say that to them as far as we know, but that's, that's the implication. You don't think you need what I have to offer, so why should I spend time with you? That's what Jesus was saying. But sinful people 
needed what Jesus was offering, and they knew it, and, and they spent time with him, and Jesus was happy to spend time with those people and teach them about God. And so later, when Jesus was appointing his apostles from among all of his followers, he chose 12. Matthew was one of those that he chose. And Matthew became an apostle, became a leader in the church after Jesus ascended back to heaven and, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, engaged in very meaningful ministry. Now, one of the things we need to understand about the concept of apostles is that they existed in the first century to do a very specific job and they don't exist anymore. Okay. Now, most people here in America, those who, who, who are of my listening audience here in America um, or, or in uh, Western developed countries, uh, probably are familiar with this idea that I'm, I'm going to talk about. But in, in Africa and perhaps in India as well, this whole thing about uh, apostles today is, uh, is still kind of a, a, a problem. Um, there is nothing in the New Testament that even remotely suggests that there was what is called apostolic succession, that uh, when the apostles were getting older and about to die, that they would select other people to be apostles after them, and then they would in turn select others, and they would in turn select others, so that in every generation, you know, there were still apostles. The Catholic Church teaches this because this is how they explain the Pope having the authority that they say he has. Um, but th that's just a myth. It isn't true. It's, there's nothing in the Bible about apostolic succession. Jesus selected and trained men to be the leaders of the first century church after he died. He selected those guys. He trained those guys. They were with him every day for about three years. He sent them out on practice preaching tours. He taught them. He pointed out their mistakes. He helped them grow and learn and develop into the leaders they needed to be. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower them and to help them beginning on the day of Pentecost, right? And those men were the leaders of the first century church. But when the last of those died, and that was the Apostle John, just after the turn of the first century, we don't know exactly when he died, 100, 102, 3, 4, somewhere in there, the first few years of the second century is when John died, then that was all. There were no more apostles. Jesus was not there to select and train any additional apostles. And there are no apostles today. So if you know somebody's running around calling himself apostle so-and-so, okay, just understand he's just doing that to, to puff himself up and make himself important and get people to listen to him. Some people call themselves prophets for the same reason. There are no prophets today, okay? All of God's will is right here in the New Testament, okay? It's all here. There isn't anything extra being given today, anything new, okay? We don't need apostles today because we have the Bible. And, and the canon of the Bible is complete and it is closed. There is no new revelation being given. So there are no apostles, there are no prophets. And if you're one of the people running around calling yourself an apostle or a prophet, you need to stop it because you're not. Jesus did not choose you. He did not train you. And he haven't give, haven't, has not given you any message that's not in the Bible. And if it's already in the Bible, then why does he need to give it to you again? It's already in the Bible. Just read it in the Bible. Okay? It's just that simple. Okay? There aren't any apostles today. So if you know somebody who's claiming to be an apostle, have them listen to this video. Try to explain it to them. There is no additional revelation today. Nobody today is getting a word from the Lord. The word is all here in the Bible, and this is what it is. There isn't anything extra. 
So Matthew wasn't an apostle, one of the original 12. Later, because of a very specific need, Jesus selected Paul. His name was Saul at the time. And after he selected him, sent him into the Arabian desert where he trained him, taught him, and trained him for three years, just like he did the other apostles. And then sent him to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And Paul changed the world of the first century with all of the preaching and teaching he did as the apostle to the Gentiles. So there were apostles in the first century. There aren't any today. Haven't been any since the, the, the first century. And there's no one today that has the authority an apostle had. I remember when I was going to school at Fuller, um, we had a guy who came up from one of the Latin American countries. I don't remember which country it was, but it was somewhere in South America. And he called himself apostle so-and-so. And, and that was really, <clears throat> excuse me, problematic. I went and talked to him and, and I said, well, when you say you're an apostle, what do you mean? And he says, well, uh, an apostle is, is one sent. I've been sent. And uh, I said, well, are you an apostle the same way Peter and Paul were apostles? No. Are, are you an apostle in, in the sense that if you write a letter, that letter becomes authoritative, like Paul's letter to Romans, the Romans or the Corinthians or Peter's letter or anything? No, I don't. Okay, so you weren't chosen by Jesus, no. You weren't trained by Jesus, no. You don't have the authority of those early apostles, no. But you call yourself an apostle, yes. Why? <laughs> he says, because the church sent me on a mission. Well, you know what that makes him? That makes him a missionary. Doesn't make him an apostle. Uh, hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> Had a little bit of a glitch there. The camera froze up on me. Um, that that made him a missionary. Didn't make him an apostle. There are no no apostles today. Uh, so we, we we need to understand that. But let's get back to Matthew. Matthew was a special guy, and and Jesus saw that, and and so he called him, and and asked him to be one of his followers. And Matthew was willing to do that. And that that's, I think, one of the things that Jesus saw. You know, he, he knew that although Matthew had a very successful business and you know, people didn't like him, he was still wealthy and had a good life, right? And uh, uh, he was willing to give that up. He was a spiritual man. He was a man who, who loved the truth. He was a man who wanted to know God. He was a man who wanted to do good. He was a man who wanted to make a difference. And Jesus could see that. See, we have trouble seeing in people's hearts. We have trouble knowing the real person, right? But Jesus didn't have that trouble. And, and he saw Matthew's heart, saw that he was a good man. And so he said, Matthew, come on, be my follower. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and Matthew said, yeah. Okay, I think I'll do that. And he got up and followed Jesus. And his life was never the same after that. And he made a difference by being one of the leaders of the early church. What if God came and, 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 and called you in that way? What if you had an opportunity to go do something that mattered? Would you do it? Would you say yes and then go? Or would you, you know, hang on to what you have? There are lots and lots of people who could go anywhere in the world and be a missionary, but in order to do that, they would have to leave their job and their home and their friends and some of their family members you see, and are they willing to do that? And lots of people say, well, no, I, I you know, I, I, I can't do that. I have to, I, I get too many responsibilities here. I can't just up and leave and go somewhere. Matthew did. Peter and Andrew did. James and John did. You see, how, how far are you willing to go to be a follower of Jesus. Matthew was willing 
to get up and leave everything. And his life was better for it. And I think the world was better for it. Matthew wrote one of the Gospels, the very first one in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, that's who he is. That's, that's one of the things he did. The world is a better place because of the life and work of Matthew that began on that day on the beach in Galilee when Jesus said, Matthew, come on, be my follower. And Matthew said, okay. Will you say okay? You think about that. And as you do, read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless.